Okay, here's a question for you guys. Can we find C value that satisfy the conclusion of the mean value theorem for the function 1 over x minus 1 on the interval 0, 3? Well, let's find out. First, here's the A and here's the B, and of course, let's review the conclusion of the mean value theorem. The derivative at the C value is equal to the slope of the line connecting the endpoints which is just f of b minus f of a over b minus a. And let's go ahead and just, let me work this out right here for you guys, okay? So f of 3, this is just going to be 1 over 3 minus 1, which is 1 half. And then f of 0, that is 1 over 0 minus 1, which is negative 1. And put them together, we will have f of 3 minus f of 0 over 3 minus 0. This right here is 1 half. This right here is negative 1. So that's minus negative 1. And then over 3. All right, just go ahead and fix this real quick. Um, to do so, you can just multiply the top and bottom by 2. So this times that is 1, and this times this is negative, so plus 2, yeah? and then over 3 times 2, which is 6, which is 3 over 6, which is 1 half. That's all you have. Yeah, just 1 half. Yeah. All right, now let's come back here and do the derivative. So. We can first write the function as, um, let's write it as x minus 1 raised to a negative 1 power. That way we can use the power rule. Put the power to the front, minus 1. The derivative is negative, and then we have x minus 1 raised to the negative 2. And don't forget the chain rule. What's the derivative of x minus 1? It's 1. So in fact, if you forget, it's okay for this case. But anyway, though, this right here is equal to negative 1 over, put down the bottom, so x minus 1 squared, yeah? Now, we are going to set this to be what? To be 1 half. So this is 1 half, like right here. And let's focus on this equation, if that's even possible. Have a look. I will cross multiply this and that. So this times 1. I will just have, um, let me write it down like this, x minus 1 squared, this times that, we get negative 2. Can we do it? If we take the square root here and square root here, this and that cancel, yeah, if you want to put plus minus, go ahead and be my guest. But as you can see, this right here is not real. You get a complex number for this. So in another word, this right here, you don't have a solution, so there's no C right here. So the answer for this is no. Cannot find a C for that because, again, in the real world, that's not possible. So now let's investigate this a little bit. Why isn't this possible? All right, let me show you guys the graph for 1 over x minus 1. We have a vertical asymptote at 1, and it's just 1 over x. You move to the right one time. So the picture will look something like this, and like that. Now, when x is 0, we have a point here. And when x is 3, uh, let's say 3 is right here. So it's like this. This is the slope of the line connecting the endpoints. So when we go from 0 to 3, here is the secant line. As you can see, there's no way for us to find a tangent line on the curve that has the same slope as that. In fact, all the slopes on the curve right here is negative. And how come for this one, we cannot find the C? Here's the deal. What happened right here when x is equal to 1? Well, when x is equal to 1, it's not continuous. So here's the key. Our function f, right? This is our function f. f, let me just write it down right here. F is not continuous on the interval that we care right here. 
Well, you can also mention that because of a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. That's why when you don't satisfy the assumption of the mean for your theorem, of course, we might not get the conclusion of the mean for your theorem, just like that. However, if you change the interval to, if you change the interval to, let's say, 3, 10 or 5, 18, as long as the interval does not contain 1, then it will still work. Right? Hopefully this helps. If you need more help, check out my other tutorials right here.